Well, Walter, it's interesting because I was going to say I know just a little bit experience-wise. I did a presentation a couple years ago. This is probably four years ago now. I went and did a presentation for a small uh, African-American church in Fresno. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was a very unique experience because I can kind of tell what you mean as far as the uh, hitting on a lot of those points. The pastor was very supportive. He came in and he wanted us to come in and talk. And I was there just by myself. And for those of you who are just listening to the podcast, you're looking, not at looking at the camera at the again, video. John. I am. I am <laughs> definitely not remotely African American. Um, no. Uh, and it was the pastor was very supportive. What? But it was very interesting to be in there. Um, you said you've never seen it go wrong. Well, um, <laughs> wow, this, wow, help me out, John. Here we this go. Could be. This could be. I, I, I'm guessing it probably was partially because I was really. I'm guessing I was probably really viewed as someone on the outside that was coming in that didn't have the same type of um, cultural background and everything. But it was interesting because most of the people that were there were older, and most of the people that were there, as you said, were women as well. A lot of a lot exactly. of mothers and a lot of mothers and grandmothers there. And I was actually shocked. It's the only time it's ever happened to me in a presentation. Um, there was a older African American woman. I think she was a grandma. And when I was talking about, you know, I was talking about a couple of different issues when I finally got to the abortion issue and I was talking about that directly, she actually stood up and started publicly disagreeing with everything I was saying in the middle of the presentation. And the pastor oh came God. up and he was, you know, very, I was actually surprised. I was saying, man, I can't believe you're taking my side. I'm just an outsider. I'm right. surprised you're siding with me over her. But he was saying, you know, now, you know, we have to be respectful of his time. He's come in and he wants to share with us. So we need to give the man his time. And they actually had me back. I think I did two different presentations there on about two weeks apart. I may have even done three. Um, but it was interesting because I could see that same type of a thing where the pastor was, he, uh, to his credit, I mean, he was very still pro-life. He came to bat for you. He did. But it was very interesting to see how, as you said, a lot of times it can be hard because I think a lot of times, and I think this happens in both African American churches and in Hispanic churches and in, you know, just mainline, you know, Anglo white Protestant churches. I think you see a lot of times there's people in the congregation that are pro choice. Yeah. A lot of times we just don't know it. Yeah. I think in this case, that lady was just very free to speak her mind. I mean, it, was, it wasn't a Sunday morning church setting. It was one of those, you know, right. Wednesday evening Bible study sessions. There's only about probably 30 or 40 people in the room. Yeah. But um, I think it's something that is, that's why it's so important. And I'm, I'm so excited you're here and so excited for your ministry, because I think it's so important that pastors themselves get involved in this issue. And they realize that they can't just rely on someone else to speak about it for them, but they have to be willing to carry the mantle. Absolutely. They have to Absolutely. be willing to, to pick up the torch and say, you know what, if my if my congregation, if my sheep are going to avoid this issue, I've got to be the one that's carrying the ball on it. So I, I totally agree with that. Well, we're going to go to a break, and we're going to come back after this. <laughs> 